And one of these days, all of our old people will be gone. And it's sad to see them all getting old and they can't uh, converse very well. And some of them understand and uh, they try their best to provide me the information. When we share with you traditional teaching of the net, it's uh, quite an endeavor to uh, be able to uh, find the people that are willing to share information. And uh, we would not be able to do all that we are able to do without the uh, help and support of our supporters, the warriors. Us traveling clear across the, uh, the Navajo Nation just to talk to the person that we've been told about. And uh, we do this all the time. And we find these people. And uh, just in the past few weeks, we've lost a couple of the ones that I have relied on so very heavily. And uh, they're old people that can still uh, converse. And it is that uh, when you find these people, some of them, you know, are reluctant at first and tell you if they understand that we're going to do it traditionally and compensate them in some way. And so some of them like to do it inside of the sweat lodge. And so when we set up the time, they prepare a sweat lodge. And uh, I go in there and I, we sing some songs and then we begin to talk about some of these subject matters that I need additional information on. And others, they will go into a hogan and they'll clean up the place, sweep it out, make it nice and neat. Some places they sprinkle a little water to keep the dust down. They might make a, a fire and uh, we'll sit over at the... Uh, the west part of the uh, the Hogan, and uh, we'll sit and talk. And uh, others, they like to maybe uh, go to some local uh, restaurant or some coffee shop, and just uh, after we order food and, and uh, such, we'll talk until they have uh, shared with me what uh, I've asked about. And so that's the way we go about uh, finding some of this information. But the other thing that... Uh, I would like to explain is that uh, the language of our people, the Denebazad, there is a very high form of the uh, Sad. And then there's the uh, middle and probably the lower. And so it is that they are at different levels. The very high, highest form of the, uh, the language of our people. Uh, is, it would seem like a foreign language, I guess, to the people that only know the low form of the, uh, the language of our people. As I've mentioned in some of the other presentations on that, that uh, that form of language is, is a language all in itself. And the um, words in that associated with the learning in that area is, is completely forgotten down in the lower part of our population as far as speaking the language. There's not very many people that understand and know. I think that uh, even the songs and some of the prayers in that when people uh, our people listen to them, they would think that they were just uh, what we call vocables, like fa la 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 or blah 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 or whatever. And uh, it wouldn't make sense to them. But uh, they are not vocables. They are actual words and that in those songs and in those prayers and in the way that the ceremonies are conducted. And uh, I've been to many, many ceremonies. I've been into many, many sweat lodge uh, settings, and I've been at very um, sacred ceremonies in that, and uh, had the opportunity to be able to ask questions. And so these things is, are the things that we uh, are able to bring and share with you, and we'll continue to do that. And one of these days, all of our old people will be gone, and it's sad to see them all getting old and they can't uh, converse very well and some of them understand and uh, they try their best to provide me the information and um, I've had some occasion in that to uh, find some of these old people in the uh, care facilities and that and it's sad the way that their family may have just uh, put them there and uh, they're lonely and they have so much to tell and they have so much to share and I see them and I, I get emotional about it. And in some ways it does uh, make me unhappy with the way that they are treated. But uh, 
as I say, we continue to, we'll continue to do the things that we need to do to be able to share with you the things that are very important, especially in this time. And again, also to say thank you to all of our people that support our effort. And so there's one issue in that that uh, keeps cropping up. Various people want to uh, ask, and uh, they do ask. And that is the subject of uh, male and female. The uh, fundamental law and the teachings of our people is said to be beken ichi, which means that all subject of life forms and that are given birth ni'ichi beken. And, uh, but also the, the second part, the third part, and the fourth part to that particular teaching, the first part is beken ni'ichi, beken ni'ina is the second one, beken ni'ina. That means that uh, there is a law that is applied to everything that's given birth, and that there is laws to way to live life, and there are laws as far as death. And then the fourth part is there are laws of the universe, and that laws that apply to us here, and laws that apply to the universe. We must abide by those laws, is what we are told. Bekeina is that we must be obedient to those laws. And we must be obedient to the laws of uh, all things that our life forms are given birth. And so when I've had the opportunity to talk to some of the old people, they talk about all life forms is given birth, but involve a man and a woman. And the terms that we use in the language of our people, when we talk about a man, we say hastri. Or when we say a woman, we say a son. And the other way that most people understand is baka, or ba'at, which means the male or female. So it is uh, Mother Earth is female, Father Sky is male. Those two have to be present to produce life. And so it is that in producing life, there has to be a male and there has to be a female. Those are the laws that apply to the Kenichi. It is very, very important to understand. And uh, when uh, birth is given, it is either a boy or a girl. Ashkila at Edla. They announce that immediately when you are born. When you're born and you come into this world, there's always somebody there. They'll say, Ashkila, it is a boy. And then if it's a girl, they say, Atela. I remember that is a part of the teachings of Ardena. And then all your life, you have to understand that that is that Neya Bakagin, Neya Ne'eya And so it is that we always have to understand that there is male and there is female. In our environment, everything is understood to be either male or female. The male reign, Nsamaka. Female rain, and so all things are assigned to be either male or female. And it is that uh, male and male cannot reproduce, female and female cannot reproduce. It is that you have to have a male so you can have woman, or you, can ha you have to have woman so you can have man. So it is that, that those are the teachings that are very fundamental, and those are the fundamental laws that apply to everything comes from birth. At birth, that they are what they are, and we cannot change it. And we may be in a position to say that uh, the words that we use sometimes to apply to men that have the feelings of woman, we might say nutli, or a woman that has the feelings of a man, we might say nutli. That's all. That is their feelings, but it doesn't make the man a woman, or it doesn't make a woman a man. The woman can still give birth, and the man can still produce offspring. There is no changing that. There is no such thing as uh, being two-spirit. You are that single spirit from the very beginning, from the first world, into the second world, and into this world, and into the next world. You will always be that one spirit. And so the teachings of our people, and we have to understand these basic laws, which is to understand. And then is to understand that there are laws in the universe that we don't understand. 
And so all kinds of studies in the world are made about energy and uh, various uh, things in our environment. And so the laws apply. The laws will not change. And it will always be even the, the law of gravity. And uh, we can kind of do things to work against gravity by reducing friction or having some propulsion to do those things. But it is that we still have to be, to be obedient to those laws. But there is the laws of the holy people, there are the laws of nature, there are the laws of universe, and there's the laws of civility. And so there are always laws. And so there comes a second part to the teaching of the uh, the ne, which is that the uh, kenichi is to understand that particular thing of male and female. The second part of that uh, uh, teaching as it progresses is that uh, there has to be the opposite, but the opposite uh, have equal force. And so it is that that's the way also to think of uh, the male and the female. The male has a quality, the female has a quality, and they are both equal in the way that they complement each other. And so it is like uh, things that are positive, things that are negative. They still have to exist. And so the laws that are presented to us by the holy people and the laws that are in nature and the laws that are in the universe are, some, are things we have to abide by. And uh, those are the teachings that we have to share. And it may seem harsh to some, but it is what we are told. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. I can't.